Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how you can create a tire tread for your bicycle tires inside of Blender. So the same tutorial would probably be useful for car tires or tank treads or anything of that sort. So the idea here is that we have this pattern and we need to have the same pattern repeat all the way around this torus object. First, of course, we have to create the pattern in the right shape and then we need to have it repeat all the way around this torus. So for right now I'm just going to switch layers and start from scratch at creating a torus. So generally speaking it's best to start creating your objects from the center of the scene uh, at 000 point. So I'm going to go to shift A to add in a mesh and we're going to start with the torus because the torus is essentially the ideal shape for a bicycle wheel. It's not quite quite a circle, it actually has more of that cylindrical shape that goes around. And uh, we're going to obviously need to make this stand upright. Well, we don't have to, you could have your bicycle tire on the ground, but I'm going to rotate it. So let's see, on the Y axis that looks about right. So generally speaking, I like to have my objects above the invisible plane area here. So I'm going to use a GZ to scale it on the Z axis. Uh, let's see, so scale it one and it's not quite there. I'm not really even looking for perfection here, but you can go over to an orthographic view to make sure that you can get it all above where you need it. If you need to get really close in, um, you can hold shift down to do fine tuning scaling and there we go. So it's almost perfectly at the axis lines. So um, now what we're going to do is take part of this torus, extrapolate it out to be the base of the tread because basically the tread sits right on top of the tire. It essentially has the same shape, at least at the base level. Um, so just taking the torus and popping it out a bit is a decent solution there. And I'm also going to create a curve by taking this middle line that goes all the way around so that we can create an array of our pattern that basically goes around and follows that curve. So I'll start with creating the curve since that's the easiest thing to do. Um, selecting this middle point here and you can do an alt right click to go all the way around to select the edge loop. Now do a shift D in order to duplicate it, P to separate it. So now that we have a separate part of the torus object, we actually need to switch over to that. Uh, we can hit tab to go into edit mode and we can see that this uh, goes all the way around perfectly. I'm going to rename that, uh, let's say tread.curve, something like that. Um, Okay, so the curve's fine now. Now we just need to pick a part of this torus area out that will serve as our repeating pattern. Um, generally, I would think the less you go across, the better, because a pattern that repeats more times is going to look a bit smoother. So I guess we'll just stick with one for right now. We don't really need more than that. So I'm going to select essentially most of the way around the curve. In my mind, I think this bottom part right here would actually be where the metal part of the inner tire would go. So I'm going to stop there. Okay, yeah, that looks about right. So I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate it. I'm going to hit Escape P to separate it. And now we have a separate part here. So I can just hide the main torus and I'll rename this trap. So now if I go to top perspective, you'll see that I've already loaded in a background image from Pixabay. So this is just a rough reference we can use of an example bicycle tire. Um, you can of course add in your background images by hitting N to open up the side panel. You go down to background images, make sure it's checked, and add in the image of your choice. And then just kind of position it accordingly looks like I might need to rotate it here to actually make it uh, along the same path as the tire. Let's rotate that 180. And yeah, I guess that's about right. So I'll move it closer to the actual tread piece. 
Oh, wait, excuse me. Um, no, I do want the 90 degree rotation because it's going this way in the y axis rather than the x axis. So just move that a little bit out so we can use it as a reference. Um, you could alternatively position it right on top of things, kind of whatever works for you. So I'll hit tab to go into edit mode. And uh, I think the easiest way to do it from here would be to use the K, the knife tool. And then you can just basically cut out the shapes that you're looking for. So remember in this image, which is not the best reference image because it's kind of got a slanted view, um, but the center is right about here. So just kind of taking that into consideration as you're doing a rough uh, work on these cutout pieces and whatever we cut out is gonna be extrapolated out and then we'll basically have a very rough tire uh, trend. So keeping in mind that the center line goes right about here, I'm going to make some cuts and yeah, it's kind of doing guesswork a little bit. Uh, obviously the better your reference image can be, the better that's going to work out for you. And I'll we'll just do a couple more cuts here. Okay. Remember of course that whatever you do cut out is going to be repeating. So if you do need two sets of this tread piece to get a full pattern, um, that could be fine. Just kind of whatever you need, whatever works for you. And uh, looking at the side, seems pretty simple. Just kind of do that. Hit enter. Don't mind the extra lines that it does to basically cut the ing on into sections. And uh, let's see. So up here, it's just kind of more of a flat thing. And you can get as uh, detailed or precise about this as you want, of course. I'm just going for rough shapes here for the sake of the tutorial. Um, yeah, and uh, let's just cut another piece out just for kicks. Maybe two even. Okay, so great. We have some rough shapes. We can extrapolate those out. Uh, it might not look the best here, but uh, we'll just go with that for now. So, oh, uh, one more thing I am actually forgetting. We should do a mirror modifier here. So I'm actually going to select all these edges and delete them. So I'm actually going to select everything west of the main line, and we're going to just delete that. Okay, so in this particular case, the origin of this object is set to basically the center of that sphere, which is going to be fine for right now, but do keep in mind if you run into any issues with the mirror modifier that uh, you might need to be moving your origin. So let's just figure out which axis it is. So reflecting on Z, enable clipping, and that looks like it's just fine right there. Um, so the advantage here is we only have to actually, you know, design it and extrapolate it once. So now what we got to do is pop out the parts that we cut to be popped out. So that's going to be here, here. Uh, you can also use the C key to get the circle select tool. Uh, just make sure you don't get any of the lines that were automatically created, the ones you don't actually want or need. And I think that's all of them there. So obviously you can go a, a bit further down here with the design, depending on how you want your treads to look precisely. But here I'm just going to extrapolate and pop them out. And that gives us something of a tread. It might not be, you know, perfectly accurate to exactly what it should look like, but you know, once again, reference images, the better one you get, the better your results are gonna be here. Um, and that gives us one piece of the tread. So what we have to do now is make this go all the way around in a circle. So I'm going to add modifier, uh, array and add modifier curve. So relative offset of the, okay, well, first I'm going to hide the curve modifier for a second here. I'm not actually sure if it matters here, but, um, which direction do we want the relative offset to be in? And here, I guess that would be that axis. So now if we add it a bunch more times, it's gonna look something like that. 
Uh, now, there's going to be one problem that we run into, which is that as it curves around, it's not going to connect in these pieces. So we actually want merge enabled here. Um, and then we're going to need to do some magic at one point or another to make sure that these lines are perfectly sealed. But we'll worry about that after we get it on the curve. So I'm going to re-enable the curve, and I'm going to select the object of the tread curve there. Ah, okay, we haven't set this to a curve. So so in order for this circle to count as a curve, we need to convert it. So I'm going to hit space and type in convert to. And that's going to give us a couple options here. We want curve from mesh text. So now this is an actual curve. And we can see that up there, it's being a curve instead of just a normal mesh object. So now we can select this curve for it to go around. Now, obviously, we get some weird results there. Um, you can try changing the deformation axis until you get the one you want. In this case, it looks like Y is kind of what we want more accurately, though it's uh, popping out to the side kind of weirdly. Okay, so to get it to work from this point, uh, we want both of these objects to have the same origin point. So what I'm gonna do is make this little point up here the origin of both objects. So let's set the origin of the circle path over there. And this is sharing the same origin, which is generally what we want. Um, now let's see, it's going all the way around the circle, uh, which is good. I think all we need to do here is rotate it, uh, yeah, on the Y axis by 90. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, that's actually pretty much just right. So yeah, if you're having any issues, just look at the transforms. Uh, the rotation may be giving you problems. Um, and you may need to rotate it a little bit along the axis. And make sure that they are sharing the same origin point and it will save you some headaches. So now we can actually increase the array and go all the way around if we want, which we will eventually. <laughs> but right now it looks more like a bunch of bones than it does like an actual tread. And that's because we have this gap in between. This would be a really cool way of making like a dragon's tail or something like that. I should keep that in mind. Um, but what we have to do is we have to seal this up. And you may even want to like solidify it because this isn't going to be completely um, surrounding the inner tire, but just most of it. So let's see here. Um, let's grab the original piece. And uh, with the ray, we can enable it so that every piece is showing. And we need to get it so that these parts are connecting in the least destructive way possible. So. So probably the simplest way to do this is just to take wherever there is a gap and extrude until the array modifier merges them together. Make sure you have merge enabled. So I can just drag this a little bit and then that merges. I can drag this. So I'll push this point out, but not far enough that it actually starts moving the whole object because it would become the furthest out point. But I'll also do the same on this side. We'll just kind of even them out. So just go around in the circle and make it all the points connect. Uh, one alternative way you could do it here would be to select an edge loop to scale them all to the same size. So that's going to be scale Y, 0, and then they're all even. And then we can do the same here. Scale Y, 0, all even. And that should theoretically pretty much make them all connect. There may be small problems here, like here. Uh, this point is below the other point. So I guess I'll select those two, scale them in the Z axis, bring them closer together. Okay, great. Now going back around, looks like pretty much all the points are sealed up. And that's going to be good. So if I tab out of here now, uh, we can see that this is forming a complete tread all the way around the tire. Now, uh, you might not have the perfect shape that you were looking for in terms of the design. And that's something you can still go back and fix if you want. So if you just kind of hide the modifiers for now, all you would need to do is make changes to this, add a remove, um, basically vertices as you would with any other polygon model.
and just remove and add what you do or don't like until you get it right. Um, I would recommend keeping the modifiers unapplied until you have basically the perfect design for your bicycle tread. But that's pretty much all you're going to need there. So I can hit Alt H now to bring in the original wheel. And we can see that the bicycle tread just kind of sits right on top of it. Now, uh, one thing you might want to be aware of is that it's possible um, parts of the tread may kind of be underneath the original torse. And we want to make sure that the tread completely sits on top. So I'm going to give them a different material here. And we can see that the, the bicycle tread isn't quite sitting completely above the other one. So we can fix that really easily. We just need to scale it a little bit. So I think like 1.01 would be enough. So I hit tab again. Okay, maybe not. Let's do 1.01 again. Not quite enough. And you can just kind of incrementally do this. So by applying an extra material to the original torus, we can see where the new bicycle tread is overlapping the torus. And we don't want any of that. So if we actually go in here and scale the bicycle tread up, that's going to basically solve the problem for us. So I'm going to scale it to 1.05 in all directions. OK, that wasn't quite enough. So I'll Control Z that and uh, just scale it a little bit more. So 1.1 maybe. So one more thing we can do when we have some of this annoying overlap is to scale the inner tube down a little bit. So I'm going to select that, uh, making sure we have it selected. This should probably have a name, uh, inner tube or whatever. So scale, and I'm going to make it, let's say, 0 0.998. So we really don't need to have much, but 999 isn't enough. So 998 should work all the way around. Uh, not quite. Okay, so we can scale it down just a, a little bit more. So 999 of that, and that should be completely what we need. And it's uh, that's not too big of an issue. So we hide that, it still looks right on top. And of course, in reality, any two objects that are sitting on top of each other are gonna have a little bit of space between them anyway. Uh, so it does make sense to have the inner tube be a little bit smaller. So now we essentially have our tread going all the way around our tube, um, sits perfectly on it. Just make sure that if you do have to move them, you move them together so that uh, they stay on top of each other in the perfect space like this. Um, and uh, beyond that, you might want to, you know, give the outer part a material. Maybe we can just make it rubber as well for now. But at least for now, we have a pretty basic, but uh, still functional, bicycle tire tread going around our original torus, just waiting for us to uh, manipulate it further, give it material, and put it on an actual bicycle, or not. So that's going to be it for this tutorial on how to create a bicycle tread, but of course you can basically follow the tutorial same way once again for tank treads, same thing for a car tread, because, well, it's still a wheel, right? And uh, aside from that, I've been Chris, thanks for watching this tutorial, and I will see you guys in my future video content.